the first image of the James Webb Space Telescope. There are thousands of galaxies in this image. There's this one, this one, and another. But you're missing the most important part. Look at these smudges. Gravitational lensing. These gravitational lenses are the reason that the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to image the oldest galaxies in the universe. On the 12th of July, 2022, NASA released the first image of the James Webb Space Telescope. Now this is referred to as Webb's first deep field, and it covers an area of the sky no more than a grain of sand at arm's length. Now what you are seeing is galaxy cluster SMACS0723, and it is a composite of images taken at different wavelengths over a period of 12 and a half hours. But this is not as it is now, but as it was 4.6 billion years ago. It's taken that long for the light to reach us that we are seeing the state of the universe from around the time when Earth was formed. The distortions you're seeing is a sign of gravitational lensing, and the combined mass of the cluster distorts the light in such a way that it magnifies the galaxies behind it, giving astrophysicists even a deeper understanding of the deep field view. It's nature's biggest telescope. Now, Gravitational lensing comes out of Einstein's general theory of relativity and provides not only a greater magnification of distant objects, but it also indirectly provides tantalizing evidence for the existence of dark matter. Now, I'm not going to go into details of Einstein's theory, except I'm going to examine one key point. Light moves through space-time along straight lines, but objects with mass distort space-time. That means if the geometry of space-time is curved, this affects the trajectories of light as well. Light continues to follow the shortest path, but through curved space-time, it will mean that the path is curved. It's a bit like this. So here is a very simple analogy to help us understand how masses can distort space-time and therefore make light bend, even though the light is actually traveling still in straight lines in space-time. So here's my board, that is my representation of space-time. And here I have some tape. This tape is not allowed to bend, and obviously if I place it on a straight surface, I'm going to get a nice straight line. But how can I put tape on there and bend, but not cause the tape to crinkle? Well, I need to distort it, and that way I do it with a base of a wine glass. So now what I do is I take some tape, and I run it across the glass, I'm running it over the distortion, the tape will not crinkle, but it changes path. And so the light bends according to us, but it is actually still traveling in a straight line according to the space time. Now it was in fact this key prediction that the astronomer Arthur Eddington in 1919 used was to able to measure the shift of a star near the sun during the solar eclipse, the amount which was predicted by Einstein's theory. Now this brings us to gravitational lensing. Now, in 1936, Einstein suggested that stars could act like a gravitational lens. They may be able to see behind a star as the light bends around it. Now, it was Fred Zwicky who, in the following year, wrote a letter to the editor of Physical Review, and he suggested that galaxies may be able to do the same thing, though he used the term nebula at the time. That galaxies, if they have enough mass, should be able to distort light coming around it, acting like a gravitational lens. The issue, however, was the limitations of telescopy to resolve such data. So it wasn't until the 1970s that we had some photographic evidence that gravitational lensing actually occurs. Now, if the object was in a direct line of sight with the observation, you would see a ring of light. And if it's off center, you would see an arc of light. Now, I want to give you a quick demonstration of how gravitational lens works by using some simple tools. Again, I'm going to use my base of my wine glass here, and you'll see I have a light source down the bottom. I'm going to move the wine glass base across your field of view, so you're seeing it from the top perspective. So in essence, this represents my lensing body. My galaxy is distorting the light, and obviously the amount of curvature in my glass is basically representative of the distortion of space-time, and the glass, of course, represents the matter that distorts the space-time. So you'll see that as I move this across, what you see of the light source will get distorted by the glass. Now, if I move it in the right position, you'll see eventually a ring forms. In other words, the light is bending around the body towards you, the observer, and you see this ring, and that has been seen in galactic imagery and is referred to as an Einstein ring. 
One thing to note, of course, this is a very limited model and a limited analogy. In this case, the distortion is caused by refraction. In the case of gravitational lensing, the distortion is because of the distortion of space-time and the curvature of space, which is causing the light to deviate from its path. Now, it's a little bit more complex than that. The lensing galaxy isn't homogeneous. That is, the distribution of mass within it isn't even. And so the lensing that it does will be somewhat distorted. And secondly, in many cases, the object that we're looking at that is behind the lensing galaxy will, will not be in the direct line of sight. It'll be off center. And so therefore we won't see a nice ring. We will see some sort of distorted image that is pushed to one side or the other. So we might only see arcs of distortion. Now astronomers have detected numerous examples of these gravitational lensing and here are but a few. Now how does this provide empirical evidence for dark matter? If you can measure the redshift of both the light from the lensing galaxy that is distorting the light and the light from the distant galaxy that is being distorted, you can determine their respective velocities. And then using the hubble lemaitre law, you can determine their distances. If you then measure the radius of the distortion, astronomers can work out the angle of deflection and by that they can work out the mass of the nearby galaxy. And what did they discover? They discovered that the masses of the galaxies that is causing the distortion is much greater than the mass determined by the starlight alone. Now, one of the most compelling evidences has been the study of what they call the Bullock Cluster. Now, the Bullock Cluster consists of two merging galaxy clusters, and they are basically made up of the galaxies as well as a lot of hot gas, and that makes up most of the ordinary matter. So in this image, you can see the two galaxy clusters. The red represents basically the distribution of gas. But if we then look at the gravitational effect, the blue represents the distribution of the dark matter that exists within that cluster. Now scientists will continue to study the images that the James Webb Space Telescope will acquire over the coming years. And they will learn much more about the properties, such as mass and composition, of the earliest galaxies detected in our universe. But more importantly, the galaxies and the galaxy clusters themselves will be able to further magnify objects behind them allowing us to peer even further into the past. Well, I hope that has given you a deeper understanding of the James Webb Space Telescope image and in particular, gravitational lensing. Please put a comment down below to continue the discussion and ask any particular questions. And please remember to like, share and subscribe. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.